afternoon. Welcome once again to the 2014 Ohio State Fair. We welcome to the Heartland Cuisine stage Miss Connie Cahill, Connie Cahill, who is with the Ohio Poultry Association. Thank you, Jenny. Good afternoon, everyone. So glad everybody's here at the Ohio State Fair, even in spite of the weather. It's always a great time here at the Ohio State Fair. We're in countdown mode. Tomorrow is the last day. So for those of you who might be coming back, please make sure that you get over to the Ag and Hort building, that you see all the wonderful things that are going over there. I see some natural resource folks here in the audience. Make sure you get back there to that wonderful natural resources area. All the dairy barn, everything that's going on over there. Please at the Creative Arts building, shout out for, oh, Natural resources, okay. The uh, Creative Arts Building on the uh, north side of the campus here uh, has all sorts of wonderful things. We had a cheesecake contest, a breakfast challenge, and a cupcake contest last week. So all of those winners are there. So please make sure that you get over there as well. This is called the Incredible Edible Egg. There are so many different things that you can do with this wonderful, all natural product. Ohio ranks second in the nation in egg production. So we have lots of little ladies that are laying these eggs about every 24 to 26 hours is how often a hen will lay an egg. So we really are very, very blessed to have this kind of a wonderful protein available here in Ohio. I love to share recipes with you. The recipes are available on our website, so make sure that you pick up a copy of the card later on when we have the samples ready for you. It's heartlandcuisine.com. And all of the folks that are around the outer perimeter of this building all contribute to Heartland Cuisine. I want to thank the Ohio Department of Agriculture for this beautiful Ohio Proud Kitchen, Kroger Company for helping us up out with all of the supplies, and then again, all of the wonderful commodities that we have here today. I have my poultry hat on today. You may see me at other times with other different hats on, promoting other things, but my real love is back here with the Poultry Association. So I'm gonna be sharing a recipe that is called the breakfast for dinner casserole. And this breakfast for dinner casserole is made in a crock pot. Now, how many of you pulled out your crock pot in recent years and said, I'm going to reuse it again? I mean, this was something that we had back in the 1970s, right? And then we all kind of pushed it to the back of the pantry, the back of our closets there and said, ah, you really don't want to use it. You know, what am I going to use it for? Well, there are so many new cookbooks out there today that are promoting using the crock pot. So if you have one, get it out. One of the things that I have found that has made my life so much easier, and I see some people nodding their heads, is the fact that the wonderful folks at Reynolds, my good friends at Reynolds, have come out with this wonderful crock pot bag. So you want to make sure to make cleanup very, very easy that you start and just line your crock pot with one of these bags. This happens to be one of my older ones. I have one that's much, much larger, and I purchased a very small crock pot, which works really well for the two of us at home now since the kids are gone. So you can have a variety of different sizes of crock pots. They work beautifully for appetizers, for main dish, for desserts, for breakfast, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Again, this recipe is on heartlandcuisine.com, and it's a very easy one. We're going to start out with these are fresh hash browns that we bake the potatoes and then we're making the hash browns ourselves. If you wanted to make it much easier for yourself, the freezer hash browns are really, really great. They're a convenience item that you can have in your freezer or refrigerator. So I'm going to just pour about a half a package here of the hash browns into uh, the crock pot here, and this is going to be a layered breakfast. What I love about this is that I can have it all made. I have everything lined. This is in the refrigerator with the lid on. About midnight or so, whenever I'm getting ready to go to bed, 11 o'clock, I can put this, plug it in, 
and be ready to go the following morning so that everybody has a great breakfast to start their day. And ladies and gentlemen, it really is true what your mom used to tell you. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. We have studies to prove it. So make sure that you're getting some protein along the way. I know you all love bagels, you all love muffins, you all love your cup of Joe in the morning, but when it comes down to fueling your body, your mind, you've got to have that protein. Of course, we at the Poultry Association want to make sure that it's eggs, but we're also going to support the dairy people as well. So if it's a cup of yogurt or you're combining the yogurt, whatever it might be with something else, use that protein. So this is a great dish for that. This uses 12 of our great Ohio eggs. And let me, uh, I thought I had some gloves here. We'll get some gloves out. Since everybody's going to be nibbling a little bit later, if you were doing it at home, you wouldn't be using the gloves. But for food safety, make sure that you are washing your hands in between handling raw product and cooked product. Oh, I feel like O.J. Simpson. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to get the glove on. Okay, I think this will work. All right, good. So let's go ahead and crack these eggs. I find that it's better to crack the eggs on a paper towel, again, that protects my countertop. And I crack them flat so that I don't get any eggshell into them. Now, when you crack a beautiful Ohio egg into your bowl, depending on what you're doing, whether you're baking or you're preparing something like this, you can break them individually, all right, or you can break them all into the bowl at the same time. That's totally up to you. If for some reason that you might get a little bit of a shell into the bowl, don't use your fingers. Make sure that you use a spoon, a spatula, whatever it might be to remove that little bit of eggshell because our fingers have bacteria. That's why it's so important to make sure that you do have your hands washed and sanitized. Also, when I crack these oak eggs open, what I'm seeing is that little white rope-like material. Ah, there's one that's really, really prominent. Anybody ever noticed that? That's what we call the chalaza of the egg, and the chalaza is nothing more than concentrated egg white. And what its job is, is to act like a rubber band or a shock absorber to make sure that that egg yolk is centered in the thick and thin white. So when I see a prominent chalaza, I know it's a fresh egg. Well, speaking of fresh eggs, so how do I know whether these eggs are fresh or not? Well, according to law here in the US and in Ohio, I think I've got one more egg there. Eggs must be dated. So I'm going to remove the gloves and throw those away. And on the end of the egg carton is a date. And that date is a sell-by date. So that means that Kroger, Giant Eagle, Meyer, where, Anderson's, wherever you go to get your groceries, that date says that they can no longer sell them after August 30th. Well, today is the second, right? So these eggs I purchased yesterday. So we know that they're fresh because the law states only 30 days. So you can keep them in your refrigerator much past this date, but ladies and gentlemen, please don't do that. Make sure you eat them all up so that you can go to the store and buy more eggs, all right? So we wanna make sure that you're using eggs and a lot of them. But that's what we call a sell-by date, the same thing with dairy products and so forth, that it works in that way. So when we work out the fact that this recipe probably serves 12 people, we're looking at about one egg per serving, depending on the size of the serving that you have. So just whip those eggs up very, very nicely with a balloon whisk. There are lots of different whisks that you can buy, the flat whisk, the balloon whisk, much larger than this. But this aerates the eggs, get a little, gets a little bit more uh, mixture of the yolk and the white. And then to this, I'm going to add whole milk, I could add cream if I like. Whatever you think your waistline will hold, all right? I use a lot of skim milk in my household, and I probably would use the skim milk. But be aware that when you use skim milk, it doesn't, not going to have as much thickness to it. OK, so this recipe now, what we're going to do is we're going to layer the recipe. So let me pull this over here. 
And I forgot, can we see okay on the, in the camera? Okay, great. I forgot to also mention that I feel that everything's better with bacon, whether it's turkey bacon or whether it's pork bacon. So if you wanted to add some bacon to the layers of this, you could do so. I just have always have the real bacon little bits in my refrigerator so that I can put them on the tops of salads, on the tops of burgers, whatever it might be. So I wanted to pass that little hint along to you. This recipe then calls for half of the onions, and I use Vidalia onions, sweet onions, if you can. It uses chopped red peppers, and I'm only layering now. And it uses a mixture of Colby, Swiss, whatever cheese your family is going to enjoy. And also some chopped ham. It can be turkey ham. Yesterday I made a wonderful recipe using turkey kielbasa here in the kitchen. So you could use the turkey kielbasa and that would be terrific with that. All right. Now we start in again with the next layer. And the potatoes are done. Let's see, I had some, ah. I have some time here. Everybody have a garden, herb garden at home? If you don't, wonderful. We can buy fresh herbs in the supermarket all the time. This, oh, pardon the pun. Okay, this is thyme, the way it looks. It's a very stock, wooded, woody stock to it. So what I like to do is just take, when I'm adding this particular herb to a dish, just take your fingers and strip the stem because the stem, again, really adds nothing in the way of flavor. Yes, fiber, but certainly not flavor. So I like to add just a little bit of some thyme to this, just on the top of the potatoes. Thyme is wonderful with eggs. Really gives it a nice, nice, wonderful, fresh flavor. So we'll just do a little bit of some thyme here. If you don't have it, it's no big deal. If you have some basil, like I have here, you can use basil. You can use marjoram, whatever herb you might have. Okay, so we've got just a little bit, not much, just a little bit. All right, and then finally, we're going to go ahead and add the rest of the red peppers. You could use green peppers if you wanted to, but I love the look of the red peppers, and I also like the flavor, the sweet flavor of the red pepper rather than the green. And you know, red peppers are green peppers, right? You all know that. It's just that we allow them to grow in the fields much longer so that they are harvested when they're red. That's why they have their wonderful sweet flavor. More cheese, more ham, and that's perfect. Now you can see this makes a pretty big crock pot full of mixture. That's why it takes about six to eight hours to prepare this particular recipe. And then we're just going to pour the egg mixture over the top, like so. And I like to just move that egg mixture around in the crock pot just a little bit to make sure that all the potatoes are soaking up that richness of the egg. All the ingredients are mingling, the flavors are mingling together. And we go from there. Let's make sure that we get all of that out. And I really do like to uh, use the turkey kielbasa. So if you've not used that before and you want to use it in this recipe, just a little hint, cut it up in chunks and then saute it a little bit on the range top to caramelize it. And it really gives it a much more wonderful flavor. So the last thing I'm going to do here is because I really like cheese as well, is I'm just going to put a little bit of some Parmesan cheese over the top. We'll do that with the baked and this is ready to go and ready to be plugged in to bake. Or I can go ahead and put this in the refrigerator, as I stated earlier, and let that sit overnight and be ready to go tomorrow morning. Now I'm going to serve that with some wonderful frog ranch. I'm always into Ohio products, so I have some frog ranch salsa. These are wonderful folks down in Southern Ohio. You can buy it mild, hot, or knock your socks off hot as far as salsa is concerned, so whatever you happen to like. A little bit of some sour cream and then some chopped chives as well. So you can prepare it that way and then have, let everyone kind of serve themselves with those condiments. Salsa is now the number one condiment in this country. It has surpassed ketchup. 
every household probably has salsa in one form or another in their house. So that's our easy overnight casserole. And as mom always taught me, make sure you clean up as you go. And that's what we want to do. Again, I don't know how many of you have purchased the basil like this. There is a root system in the bottom of the bag here that keeps the basil growing. So you don't need to have it in a pot, just keep water in it and keep it in your kitchen or in your refrigerator and it will keep growing and then you'll be able to use all the various leaves on it. I love fresh basil. Uh, I have the herb scissors that you can chop them up. So that's a really fun little thing to have. If you don't have an herb garden at home, uh, you can certainly buy the fresh herbs now all of the time. Okay, Jenny, I'm gonna move over here if I may. How do you like my wine? Spring water. Okay. Life is too short not to enjoy dessert, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to have a lot of it, but you have to enjoy it. So this is a great little summertime berry trifle. The recipe starts out with a beautiful lemon orange pound cake that uses six eggs. It has a wonderful, delightful flavor to it. I wanted to let you know you're going to be able to sample this, but for some of you, if you wish to sample, yesterday I made a wonderful Ohio honey basil muddled sauce to go over some ice cream, velvet ice cream. And I had some sauce left over, so I thought that would be wonderful on this cake. So we're gonna let you sample that too, all right? But it's very, very pretty. It's puddled all along there. So we'll cut that up a little bit later. So what about the trifle? So once you get the trifle cake all done, and you can make it either in a bud pan or you can go ahead and make it just in an angel food cake pan or a nine by 13 is fine too because what you're going to do is just cut up all the pieces then, all right, into squares. So it's very, very easy. Quite honestly, this is what makes the dish so pretty is the fact that you have a trifle bowl and you can buy these for 10 bucks, you know, in, in lots of different places. So I use this to serve punch out of. If I just have a small group of people uh, in the house, you can do this for a salad. It makes a beautiful layered salad, or you can use it exactly for what we're using it for, and that's the trifle. So we have fresh berries, combination of blueberries, strawberries, raspberries. You could use bananas. Um, I had some of these little guys yesterday. I don't know if any of you have ever purchased the little sweet baby bananas, but they're really great, great fun. So you could put some of those in this if you wished. And so what we're going to do is start out with just a little bit of some of the fruit. I've already started the trifle here. And this is a wonderful combination of fresh fruit. You can buy this now in the supermarket, all done for you. So it, you don't even have to worry about uh, spending the time cleaning the raspberries, cleaning the strawberries, slicing them, this is all done automatically. Oh, let's just go ahead and put all the fruit in. I'm a real big lover of fresh fruit all year long, but especially when we can get this fresh fruit now. So you're going to layer that mixture. To this then, what we're going to do is make a filling. And this calls for a five ounce package of instant pudding, instant vanilla pudding. This happens to be, uh, this is, um, okay, this is not sugar-free, so if you wanted to get sugar-free, you could. Another suggestion is that I have made this with the cheesecake pudding mix, and that is really, really good. So that gives it a little bit different flavor, so you can do that if you wish. It calls for a package of non-dairy whipped topping. If you wanted to use a beautiful whipped cream dairy product, you could certainly do that and just whip that all up accordingly. Now what's going to happen with the pudding and pie filling is that it really kind of acts as a thickener for the non-dairy whipped topping. It acts as a flavoring. And you just want to mix this all together. 
Now, I also wanted to mention that uh, because we are ranked number two in the nation in egg production, that we have lots of farmers all over the state who are very much involved with their communities. They want to make sure that they are good members of the community, taking care of their animals in the most humane way possible. So it's really good to have these folks in your community helping you out. And for many of our egg farmers, they have been in the business. This is now fourth, fifth generation of egg farmers. So to this, I'm going to add then a can of fat-free condensed milk, fat-free condensed milk. This stuff is habit forming. So if you've not had a chance to uh, enjoy this, you don't, do not have to use the full fat product in this. The fat-free will do just fine. And I have to say that I don't necessarily always think that way because I don't always like fat-free products, but for the condensed milk, it works out very, very nicely. So you can see that the mixture is coming together here. I'm just gonna smooth it out a little bit more. I hope you all have had a chance to see all of our beautiful ladies over in the poultry science area. We have lots of beautiful different breeds of hens and chickens over there, as well as the presidential turkey over in the poultry area and also in the Ag and Hort building. So we hope that Ohio will have the opportunity to present the presidential turkey to President Obama and Mrs. Obama this fall. So you'll have a chance to see those birds and they are beautiful. Okay, so this is all mixed together. Let's just pour about half of it over the top. Spread it out a little bit so that we will be able to see the layers coming through. And then we're going to add the remainder of the cake that I have cut up into slices or chunked. And actually, you can see I have about one third of the cake left. So if you just wanted to serve this or slice it up and use it just with ice cream, you could do that very, very easily. It really is a wonderful, moist, and dense pound cake. And what I love about it is that it has that orange lemon flavor. So we're gonna work that over the top like so. And then let's put some more berries on top. Shall we go for all of it? Let's go for all of it. Let's go for all of it. Okay. And then finally, we add the remainder of the cream mixture over the top, like so. And ladies and gentlemen, we do eat with our eyes, do we not? So let's make sure, let's dribble that a little bit over here, like so, smooth it out. And let's make sure that we put a little bit of some fresh mint, again, beautiful fresh mint, wonderful aroma, wonderful flavor. Top the trifle with that. And I would venture to say that if you serve that probably to your family or friends, they'd think that you were a gourmet cook. And in reality, as you can see, I put it together in about 10 minutes. It's a beautiful to serve, even more delicious to uh, enjoy. So that's the summertime trifle. Okay, questions from anyone about the poultry industry. I hope if you've not had a chance to enjoy some poultry products here in the building, you will do so. Our Thanksgiving turkey at the fair is my favorite because we have dressing, mashed potatoes, cranberries, a whole nine yards. My daughter's favorite is the chicken and noodles. We have corn fritters. We have this year for the first time, peach, apple, and cherry cobbler. So you can grab the cherry cobbler and go over to the booth here and get a dip of velvet ice cream on top. But that's afterwards, after you're able to sample all of our goodies. Thank you so much for giving us a little bit of time here in the Heartland Cuisine Kitchen. Have a great day at the Ohio State Fair.